This is my 2004 runner, Generation 3, that we're going to do some frame repairs on. Um, the history of this is Toyota um, obviously had issues back in the 2000s, and um, they recalled many of the framed vehicles, including the Sequoia and the Tacoma, but they chose not to recall the 4Runner, and I suspect that's because of the quantity sold. I went to the dealership. They weren't willing to help me. I have written to Toyota. I've used the Better Business Bureau, and I've also used the Attorney General here in Minnesota. Toyota has responded via letter that they have supported this vehicle as much as they're willing to support it as a company. So that's the three-year, 36,000 miles. And if I don't like it, I can pay for the repairs myself um, or simply buy a vehicle branded other than Toyota, which um, is certainly is what I would do next time. So with that being said, it is a forerunner. Most of you know that it's worth putting some energy into. So I am going to attempt to fix the frame and share that knowledge that I have gained. Just a quick disclaimer that I am not a welder in any sense of the word, so please do not use this video as a welding instruction video. This is simply a video providing some food for thought for the repair of your own forerunner if you choose to repair it. Thanks. Show some pictures of the rust from the bottom of my 2000 forerunner. See all the way to the other cross member. extensive rust. I broke off the rear stabilizer for the axle so I have that removed already. This is the gas tank side if you haven't figured that out. The gas tank's already out. And, um, I've already fixed the muffler side which I'll show you next. Here's a picture of the muffler side. You see the quarter inch structural steel angle iron holding it up right up to the right up to the body panel. And this is two layers thick. If you look carefully, there's another structural steel coming in from the other side. So I guess in theory, the bottom of this rail now is exactly one half inch of structural steel. Um, and the walls on each side are a quarter quarter inch, totaling a total of a half inch, let me try to get underneath here, half inch of structural steel. So if you look right up to the cross member, and then I have two layers thick. And it's welded full, full weld all the way up. Not the prettiest welds, but nonetheless structurally sound. I'm gonna try to get to the back side. And you can see what's happening here. And then finally, I put a plate. It's really hard to see. Sorry about that. There's the beginning of another plate that's holding on. Once again, the anchor to the axle. Okay, we're back on the muffler side here. I just want to point out that I still have a little bit more to do. I'm right at the cross member here, so I'm going to do another um, quarter inch structural steel piece um, right there. Okay, so I just got my metal. Um, actually, I'm going to share the invoice with that so you can see what I bought, but it's basically, sorry about that, it's quarter inch um, steel angle iron, and um, we just go ahead and cut this up. The um, quarter inch steel angle iron. Now this is four inch by three inch quarter inch steel. Um, it is hot rolled, so it's a little easier to work with. Um, not as strong, but being quarter inch, you know, the, the frame itself is just sheet metal stamped. So this quarter inch is, is just way overkill. I, I probably could have got away with something a, a lot smaller. Here is the invoice for the metal, just so you know exactly what I purchased. Okay, I'm under the car, and here's a four inch wide piece of steel. Just for reference, um, if this was the 4x3 uh, structural steel angle, the 4 inches will go up this high against the, um, against the frame. And you'll see what I'm trying to achieve is to get um, to the place where I have some strong uh, frame metal to weld against. And this would work pretty good. And once again, this is what I'm trying to fix. So when that structural steel angle iron comes up, I'll probably bring it right to about here. Um, 
which will overlap a little bit. It'll probably be a little further, but it would overlap. The bottom of it will overlap the um, the piece that's hanging. So okay, here we go once again. So I'm gonna take the bottom, which is a three inch side of the angle iron, right to the edge of this cross member. And if I do that, I look over here, we can see, this is my uh, bracket for the rear axle, which is broken off. We can see that the bottom of that angle iron is gonna be right about 20 inches, um, which is a three inch side of that angle iron, the structural steel angle iron I purchased, which is a quarter inch thick. So I, I'm, I'm gonna cut the bottom, the three inch side, uh, by 20 inches. This is a little, again, hard to see, but if the bottom is at 20 inches, the side, which is the four inch side of the angle iron, I'm gonna cut at 22 inches. Excuse the picture, okay. I'm gonna cut that at 22 inches up the side of this frame. And, and once I cut it, you'll, you'll have a better understanding of what I'm trying to achieve. But again, I'm trying to get surface area to weld. Okay, so here's the uh, three by four that we spoke about. And hopefully you can see the lines. Sorry about the sun, there we go. So you'll notice that the, on the three inch side, I'm 20 inches from the end. And then I offset that by two inches for 22 inches on the four inch side. And that's gonna just sit up in there pretty good. Okay, here's that cut we're talking about. You can see the offset. And I'm just gonna do a hand cut for the rest of it. There you go. Would have been a lot easier with a plasma, but I have the tools I have, so. Okay, okay, so let's take a quick look at what's going on here. Here's the uh, three by four, right up against the edge. I'm working with my left hand, so excuse the shaking. Um, and look at that. So you see what I'm doing? Kind of, basically I'm gonna take this, the offset gives me a little extra metal to weld on. When I clamp this up, it'll look easier, but um, a little extra metal to weld on here around this corner. And then by dropping it down, I'll probably grind this down just a little bit, but I'll get some welding material in here. Um, not the best, but definitely better than where we were. And then I'll start, as you see as this video goes on, I'll start plating this off with four inch plate going up here. And then finally a piece back here. And, and the reason we're putting metal at the bottom of this frame, even though it's structurally not um, going to help too much, is what really broke this was a, a lift that when I had an oil change, they sent the lift right through the frame. So so by putting metal down in here, that's where the lift kind of locks in every time they lift this darn thing. If I swing the camera to the other side, you'll see I did the same thing on this side. This is where the lift is, and it's nice and structurally sound. Boy, I'm real happy with the way this is sitting. Uh, so. Using the square of the frame right here and, and using that as a reference, um, you can see where the frame starts going up. I'm just gonna let that go up and, and I'll, I'll gap fill that with a little bit of uh, wire. Okay, real quick, this is what I have. Um, this is the offset. You'll see I did quite a bit of grinding. I thinned out the metal in a divot. And, and when I get under the car you'll, or truck, you'll quickly see why I did that. Here you could get a close-up view of why I ground down that piece of uh, three inch steel at the bottom so it more tightly fits in there and the bracket actually stays aligned with the height I would expect relative to the frame itself. I'm real happy with this. What I'm looking for is that the bracket is real square with the frame and back in the original position so this way when the axle connects to it I'm not pushing the axle either forward or back. Just a word of warning, watch your brake lines when you're putting in your clamps otherwise you can pinch the line. Um, so I have this thing strapped up. Take a quick look. Just a couple clamps to really start fitting it. And what I just discovered was if I press this quarter inch sheet up against the frame and actually right here just really press it tightly into the frame um, it offsets 
this bracket way too far outwards to the outside of the vehicle. I, I mean, almost a quarter inch too much. So I've decided that I'm gonna change my design. I'm gonna cut this right here. And I know what's gonna happen is it removes a lot of material that I can weld right here. But what I'm gonna do is cut this off, set this properly in the right position, and put another sheet on top of this that will weld to this piece here. This is the aftermarket modification. And basically I cut out another chunk and then you can see quite a bit of grinding right in that corner because what I want to do is make sure that piece fits in there fairly well. Since this is quarter inch steel, I'm, I'm definitely not worried about taking some off. Um, and this will be a pretty good compromise. I'll get this, um, this edge here fairly close to the frame. Here we go. This is after I modified it a little bit. You can see kind of what I did now. I had to chop out that corner and I have this thing strapped in pretty tight at this point. I'm feeling pretty good about it. Um, there's this up here is nice and tight. Where's my finger? There it is. Um, that's nice and tight. I mean, within reason. That's uh, getting closer. I, this won't ever be tight just because the frame's bent in a little bit. You know, it's just stamp steel again. And then this, this is the important piece, is I want this to be centered really well to about where it was um, before um, it broke. And that's pretty obvious because that's going to dictate the uh, suspension, um, the uh, squareness of the rear, rear axle. Okay, a quick review of tools. Uh, obviously, auto dimming uh, face mask, uh, some safety gloves, uh, leather um, coverall top. Because there you go, uh, tank of C25. Nothing too big. Um, she does run on 220, so I had to dump a uh, 40 amp 220 circuit into the house real quick to get her to run. I laid a uh, quick bead just to see where I'm going. I did some tacking of my first piece. For reference, I'm at uh, 3 hundredths of an inch wire, so uh, 0 0.030, and my particular uh, feed welder is sitting at uh, 4 on the voltage, and 2.5 on the wire feed. There you have it. Let's go into the car, I'll show you what I tacked. Okay, a couple quick tacks, just holding this in from the outside edge, and then um, I'll flip underneath and we'll take a look at that. So I just did a couple quick tacks across the top, across the sides. Just see what I have. There we go. And um, I'm going to go ahead and start playing around and make sure this thing's sitting right where I want it to sit. I just did some grinding. And when it comes to this edge right here, you actually want to taper down that edge. Because in a couple moments you'll see that I'm going to lay the other 4 inch by 3 inch on top of it. It's, because it's um, structural steel, there's a, a, a slight um, bend, you know, a little excess metal as they're bending it, um, and you want to make some room for that so it's a nice tight fit. Okay, on this side, I just did a little bit of grinding, um, just because right here you're gonna we're gonna layer another piece of metal flat across it. I didn't want a bunch of goobers sticking out. And then the top of this is, is welded good enough for now. Uh, just, it's, it's certainly in place. I just, I'll go back and clean it up uh, for finish welding in a little bit. Um, this is actually right where I want to see it sit. And, and it looks a little funky now because this area here was actually all rotted through. This area here is um, supposed to be overlapped on this frame. So this edge overlaps this frame slightly. And that's why it looks like it's it's maybe not in the right place. But after a lot of observation, this will get pushed up a little bit right here. But after a lot of observation, I'm pretty darn close. The next piece I'm gonna put in is gonna be a, a little plate that's gonna go in front of the um, in front of the bracket. And the reason I'm putting that plate there is because the next piece of angle iron that comes in, I'm going to push up against that plate and I want two layers of weld. And then that plate will actually adhere 
to this bracket. You can see that I have that bracket chained up now and that's exactly where I want it to be. Um, I took a tape measure to it and I really feel good about it. So at this point, I'm just gonna go ahead and get the plate in the front. It'll probably be about three inches by two inches. Not very big, but just enough so when the next lift or jack comes in and they push it in here, it won't take this out, it won't put stress on that. It'll actually um, have a little channel in there that a jack or a, a lift can uh, lock into. I have the uh, bracket all strapped up exactly where I want it. I'm real happy with that. And then this piece here is, um, as you can see, ground down, but uh, it fits really well. Um, I have it engineered to uh, do just what I need it to do. It's about two inches by three inches in a somewhat trapezoid. Um, certainly would have been nice if my buddy got me my plasma cutter that he said he would lend to me but was unable to do so. Um, so I had to use grinders. So basically this is going to go right there. Hopefully that is a visual for you. Um, and once again this is to keep the jack or um, some kind of lift from banging into this uh, bracket and more importantly is it gives me lots of weld points down here where the bracket's nice and uh, thick and strong and you can see why I did some of the engineering just to help um, fit that right where I want it to be and then more importantly is I'm going to get one beetle weld there and then when I put this second angle iron on facing the opposite direction um, I'll, it'll give me a whole nother sec, um, a whole nother weld point and, and at that point I have a lot to build off of to uh, finish on strengthening this. Here's my um, 4x3. I have a couple of markings on there. I'm going to go ahead and put this um, just as you see right here. I'm going to cut those two lines that you see. And the reason I'm cutting um, this hole right here is because um, this piece sticks out higher than the rest of the uh, frame. And uh, that'll give me some opportunity to um, fill weld it or just leave it the way it is. And when I put the steel on top, then I could catch weld down here where the steel is in much better shape than up on the edge. So this is all welded in. Don't make fun of my welding. But you know, you can hopefully see how that's building the structure. And then um, I take this other and basically put it right up in here. This is the outside edge of the Forerunner. I'm looking in at it. And you can see the second piece of angle iron on there. There you go. And um, you can see what I built here. Um, this little cutout right here is just to make some room for, for the bracket because I don't want to squeeze it. And, and um, when this is all put together, one of the things you'll notice is I, it's impossible to get both this edge and this top edge squeezed in tight enough so they're flat surfaced. So I'm biasing the top of this to be flat against the frame because that's where I'm most concerned about getting traction with the weld. So this is nice and flat all the way across and, and then I'll get a nice bite onto the frame with that, um, building the structure down through this um, two pieces of angle iron and then I could weld this full seam right here. So basically what I'm building is a, um, a box around this bracket. Okay, so uh, yesterday I did not have batteries in my camera. So you missed a couple hours of welding, but this is what I did. So let me quickly show what this is all about. I have one piece of metal, one piece of steel right here, and then another piece, uh, one piece of steel right here, and one piece right here. I want like this. And one would say, let me just try to show that better. One would say that this is absolutely non-structural. All this was was a fill in a big gap between those two pieces of steel. And right here, there's a big hole that would cause dirt and um, salt and water to get in there. And there was no real good way to drain it. So, so I just filled it in and did some fillet and then ground it down. 
So I think this outside edge is completely done. I put this piece here um, to further add some structural attachment. You know, some adhesion, if you will, to this piece. So um, the outside edge is done. And I'm now gonna work on the inside edge. Here's the next piece. It's kind of a somewhat square trapezoid, little L piece at the end. Pretty obvious what's happening here. Um, I did put a fillet at the bottom of this piece, at the bottom edge. You can see I ground the center. And what I was trying to achieve is this is a lip. I need to make some space for it and still attach as low as I can right down this edge. You can see there's a little bit of rust there. I ground down a little bit and, and I want to get a nice bite down here. So that being said, this fits in there pretty darn tight. You know, for my taste, it'll land just that way. I'll weld all the way down. On top will connect me to the frame. And then down below, if you look carefully, there you go. You can see that that fillet kind of filled in some gap. Uh, I should be able to easily fill that in. Over here I'll have some um, work to do, but I think it'll work just fine. Yeah, okay. That's the piece welded up. I've already ground it down some just to make it more aerodynamic. That was a joke. Okay, here's a handy little tool that helps me determine the angle. I'll just put it up here. This here is being my square edge that I'm gonna reference off of. I'm just gonna put it up there and say, okay, that's about where I want that angle to be. And ironically, the handle is just about the um, length I want it to be too. Come over to my four inch edge, and I can see where my angle is gonna fall. And so I'll probably cut right about here. Okay, with a little bit of measuring, this is what we ended up with. If you take a look, we have um, just turned out to be 30 degree angles that we're gonna cut. And then on the bottom, I'm gonna do an offset of three quarters of an inch so this way it fits in there. It gives me plenty of welding material. And then on this edge, I have some adjustment I'll have to do, but I think what's gonna happen is this is gonna actually overlap the bracket that I'm trying to hold on. This is the piece that we ended up with. Um, it's a four inch by three inch structural steel deal. And you'll see that um, basically what I did was um, I had to take a little bit off the three inch side. I took about a, a, almost um, I don't know, about a quarter of an inch. So it's probably about two and three quarters across. I put a, a nice uh, grind in there for the uh, bracket down below. A couple grinds for some welds that already existed. Finally, I, I cut off this, this back corner. And the reason I did that, that's on the four inch side. The reason I cut that off is when it's up on the frame, I just wanted some more room to weld and the frame's in good shape up there so so I don't have to worry too much about rust. And I just don't want to weld too high on the frame. So that's All ready for welding. Let's see what we get. Okay, that piece is in. Welded completely around the top side. Edge to edge. Around the um around the bracket. I got uh, connected to that bracket fairly well. You know, given the difference in size of metal, I think it, it'll be just fine. And uh, these welds here were a little challenge, but up here I started to get a nice bite. So I feel good about that. On the outside edge, you can see um, this gap, I'm just gonna leave a gap. There's just nothing I'm gonna do about it. Just way too big and I th this frame is in good shape so there's no reason for me to hack at it with a welder. So in the summary, just to kind of throw it out there, what the intent was was to get two of these structural pieces to clamp the frame, get as much 
um, bite on the top or upper frame as I can where the rust was not and then finally extend the structural support I just built here across the back both sides to hold this piece on. Right here is a new piece I just added just to let you know just to show you the reason I added this was right at this cross member here there was a little bit of rust around here that was causing me some some ailment and this cross member looked like it was uh, starting to weaken so if you look at this carefully you can see that I just put a piece of the 3x4 in there welded it up right against the frame Okay, I'm just getting ready to uh, clean up some of this rust and paint it. I'll be using POR15, P-O-R-15. Uh, um, okay, we're going to talk some painting supplies. First thing I'm going to recommend is temporary brushes. These foam ones were absolutely perfect for the frame. Um, I'd go through a couple, you know, per session, but it's worth every penny. Um, new stir sticks, get plenty of those. You know, the, the idea here is to open up these um, containers of pour 15, pour them into a temporary holding um, cup. These are just paint cups. And um, close the container as quickly as possible. I'm gonna highly recommend you not paint from this container because once you seal the lid, and if there's paint around that lid, you will never open this lid again. You, you would basically need a can opener to open it. This stuff's very adhesive. Um, and then finally some um, metal prep for the frame and then uh, basically I spray that on let it sit for about 30 minutes and I wash it off um, and really get it nice and dry they use the words bone dry if I didn't mention it before you absolutely need rubber gloves for this paint you cannot get away with them um, without them so hopefully that helps this is uh, the silver paint dried I used it down at the bottom used it for the top of the gas can and this is the bottom of that plastic cup. And as hard as I can possibly bend it, this thing will not break or move or bend. It's absolutely rock solid hard. Here's the inside edge of the driver's side. It's fairly cleaned up. And I used the metal prep on all this metal Then I washed it down with a water and towel and got it fairly clean. Here we are with the gas tank shield. It's all dried. One of the things I neglected to do, and so I um, just did a trial fit, and what was happening is this um, piece right here, because it goes up against the frame that has now a, a new half inch of steel, um, this is too long by about a half inch. And it would almost fit in there if I just kind of forced it in, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and Cut this right about here, just overlap it and weld it back into place. Here's the new um, bracket cut, and basically all I did was cut it, I overlapped it, I squeezed the living hell out of it until it kind of squeezed into place, and um, then I just pack welded it um, and finally uh, put a quick bead down. So it's pretty simple. Okay, the moment of truth. The uh, rear axle tracking bar is in, tightened down, and um, this all holds as planned. Uh, we got ourselves a forerunner back on the road. Looks pretty darn good. So I have to get that bolt in there, I'll wait for the paint to dry. And um, she's in. Okay. It's time to let her down and give her a try. Well, my 2004 runner is finally back on the road and she's tracking perfectly straight. So I'm going to write this one off as a successful project and a fun one at that. When you have a chance, check out my other videos on how to replace a fuel pump, gas tank, and headlights. Once again, thank you for listening to this video. I enjoyed creating it.